booktube Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my weekly reads for September the 8th of 2018. In my weekly reads videos every week I talk about all the books that I finished this week and I let you guys know what I'm currently reading. So I'm off to a little bit of a late start this morning. Um, I'm just starting to drink my coffee now and it's just after lunch. <laughs> um, I had a very good McDonald's breakfast for lunch. I had to get blood work done this morning, so like I said, I'm a little behind. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm drinking this morning, just my coffee, not terribly interesting. Um, but yeah, I wanted to sit down and get this recorded. So I finished four books uh, this week, um, very pleased with that. It's been a difficult week at work. Um, next week and the week after um, promise sadly to be the same. Um, we're really, really busy, so not a lot of reading time, but I'm actually very pleased on what I got done. Um, along with some knitting stuff that I have to show you guys at the end. So the first book that I finished this week was Coco Beach by Beatrice Williams. This is a historical fiction novel. It was narrated on audio by Eva uh, Kaminsky and Alex Wyndham, um, published in 2017 by William Morrow. Um, average rating of uh, 3.47 stars on Goodreads. I gave it four and a half stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. So the premise of it is about a woman by the name of Virginia. And it takes place, the bulk of the, well, it takes place in a dual time narrative. So one part takes place in 1922 and she has just learned that the husband that she was estranged from is dead and she goes travels from New York, um, New York City to Cocoa Beach, Florida and um, to find out more about what happened to him and how he died and things like that. And then the uh, second part, like the other story that it kind of goes back and forth each chapter takes place during the second or the first world war, excuse me. Um, so 1914 or is it 1914? I can't remember, but they it might even be later than that. It might be 19, 1916. I'm not absolutely certain. Um, but it's a very, cl it's very close time period to when, you know, the 1922 part of the story takes place. So it goes back when you're going back to the part parts about World War One. It's how her and her husband Simon met. And, you know, she was um, not really a nurse, but she was working with the Red Cross. She actually drove in ambulances and um, he was a doctor. She's American and he's British. And um, it's how the two of them met and what happened and their relationship over the years during the war, you know, and stuff like that. And then to the more recent time in 1922, again, of how he died and things like that. This deals with prohibition and, you know, there's a mystery element to it. And, you know, it's it was really, really good. I've never read this author before, but now I want to check out all the rest of her work. Um, I was absolutely enthralled with the story. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The narration on this was spot on. Um, uh, Eva uh, Kaminsky, she does the bulk of the narration. Um, Alex Wyndham does a little bit. Uh, he does the prologue, the epilogue, and a couple parts in between where there are letters from Simon to Virginia, and he he narrates them um so but her she was seamlessly i mean it, it seems seamless when two of the characters were having a conversation like i said uh, virginia is american and you know a few of the other characters are british so when her and another character are having a conversation with each other she was seamlessly able to go between an american and a british accent it was fantastic and you know even within different um you know like a male's voice to a female's voice really really good um i highly recommend it if you can get it on audio i borrowed my copy from the library so your library might have a copy on audio as well but yeah really really great historical fiction novel it was a time period that i'm not i don't normally read that much about but i was thoroughly interested and like i said i cannot wait to read more by this author the next book that i finished was the De deputy's redemption by dolores fawson this is a romantic suspense novel it is book number five in the sweetwater ranch series uh, Harlequin Intrigue Novel number 1551, published in 2015 by Harlequin, of course. Um, an average rating of 4.1 stars on Goodreads. This one I gave a 3.5 star. You'll notice I'm not mentioning um, what challenges I did all these for. Um, there are a few little changes that I am doing to the channel. Nothing massive, so don't panic. Um, but there will be a, an announcement video later this week um, on Tuesday, I think, um, is the day I'm going to post it. So stay tuned for that and I'll talk more about that. But yeah, for for now, I'm not putting that in here. Um, so this is the story of Elise and Colt. And Colt is another one of the brothers. Now this, typically I say with most series, you don't necessarily need to read them in order. But I feel that these small little um, mini series kind of within like the intrigue line and the desire line and stuff, these ones, you might want to read them in order because 
there is an overarching um, plot line that follows throughout all of the books, and that is that Colt's mother is um, on trial for murder, for murdering um, her lover, essentially. And um, this happened when they were much younger, um, you know, when Colt and his siblings were much, much younger. Um, and, you know, now um, Elise is actually a childhood friend. Um, and she was just outside the cabin when this m supposed murder took place. And there's things that she saw. So she's actually being brought onto trial, like to the trial as a witness. Colt is one of the brothers, one of Jewel's sons. And he, um, he's a sh deputy. Um, with the local, the, the Sweetwater Ranch, um, it's, that's the town, um, with the local sheriff Depar sheriff's department, excuse me. So at the very beginning of the book, this book opens up with a lot of action that Elise has run off the road by somebody and she thinks it's actually Colt and she's running from him and she tries to shoot him and things like that. Um, they were best friends growing up, so it wasn't, this wasn't necessarily a second chance romance. Um, of course, the romance aspect does come into this, um, with the two of them developing a relationship. But the bulk of the story, sorry, Gorn's just crying for the sake of crying um is them trying to find out who is after her and who is trying to attack her is it someone related to the trial or is it something completely different like outside of that so it was a really really good story like i said you know i would recommend that you read them in order but you don't necessarily have to if you want to pick up one every now and then this one i enjoyed more than i think the last couple um yeah this one i i actually i think even at three and a half stars i i did enjoy it quite a bit more um and because I liked Elise and, and I liked Colt and like I said, there was a lot of action in this one. It was really fun and I do recommend it. The next book that I finished was Deadly Intent by Carolyn Keene. This is a YA mystery story. Um, book number two in the Nancy Drew Files. This is the uh, series that came out in the 80s. So this is the series that I'm used to reading. Um, it was published in 1986 by Simon Pulse. Average rating of 3.64 stars on Goodreads. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, this one was fun. Uh, I enjoyed it. A lot of action, a good mystery in this one. The plot is that Nancy and her cousins, Bess and George, are in New York City to see um, a band play. <clears throat> and the lead singer of that band goes missing right before the concert. And a friend, um, actually Bess's boyfriend, Alex, um, is a guitar player and he's asked to come on stage and play with the band and stuff like that. And then, of course, he thinks he's now going to become rich and famous. But the whole thing is them trying to find out what happened to this lead singer. And within all of that is also something that's actually, even though this was written in 86, it's something that's still very poignant now in 2018. And that is piracy um, of, you know, at the time it was records. But I mean, that's still an even bigger issue now in the digital age. And, you know, it was kind of really interesting um, that, you know, they probably thought at the time when the book was being written that this was very forward thinking and, you know, what have you. Whereas this is sadly still an issue that we're dealing with today. Um, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed that part of it. Um, you know, this isn't a, a book from the 80s, so, you know, bear that in mind. Um, you know, some of the things that, that happen, you know, wouldn't necessarily, um, um, be proper to be written about now. And, and when I say that, there's a big issue with, like, um, finding out if it's the Chinese that are smuggling and stuff like that, you know. I, I'm not saying it's, there's no racism in this book, but, you know, some of the things that are mentioned, you know, um, what do you call it, stereotypes and things like that, you know, again, read it for what it is, you know, we learn from our history. And these are still really fun books, and I'm really, really enjoying reading through these again. And the last book that I finished this week was Big Sky Country by Linda Lael Miller. This is a contemporary romance novel. It is book number one in the Parable Montana series. I read book number three um, back in August for Read Bliss uh, for one of the videos that I did for them. Um, this was narrated on audio by Jack Garrett, and he does a good enough job. Not my favorite narrator, but he works well for these stories. Um, this was published originally in 2012 by HQN Books. Average rating of 4.04 stars on Goodreads. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, I enjoyed this one. I didn't absolutely love it. Um, in a way, there were a few things in this that I just found just a little... I, I'm not sure. Some of It's actually funny because some of the plot lines, like one of the plot line things in this book actually mirrors the third book in a way. Um, so this is the story of Jocelyn and Slade. And the two of them knew each other when they were younger. Um, they kind of were opposite... Um, in social status in town. Um, he had a single mum and his father was actually one of the most wealthy men in the county, but he was born, as they would say in in historical romance novels, on the wrong side of the bedsheets. 
Um, so the beginning of the book, it opens up that the father, like his, everybody in town knew it was his dad because they, they were spitting images of each other. But, and he is now the local um, sheriff in town. And um, the father has died. And he has a legitimate, a legitimate son um, named uh, Hutch. And the will is read and it is, it's leaving both Hutch and Slade each half of everything. So you've kind of got that plot line running through the book that, um, you know, Hutch is very upset about this because the two of them never did get along, um, even though they are brothers. Um, but it was never really acknowledged. And um, like I said, Slade has, has a single mom. And then Jocelyn, um, her mother was also, I think, divorced and then remarried when Jocelyn was young. And she had the stepfather and she, you know, lived in a big mansion and all these things. Well, it turns out that her stepfather had swindled half the town in some sort of what it sounds like a pyramid scheme of some kind. So Jocelyn has come back to town like she left because, you know, of the embarrassment of what happened. And, um, you know, the father went or her stepfather went off to jail and things. And she's now back to try and make amends. Um, she did make amends. I don't want to talk too much about what happened, but um, she still is back in town. And of course, she's being treated a certain way by certain people because of what happens, you know, of what happened, excuse me, with her stepfather. So the two of them, of course, kind of fall back into, fall into a relationship. But that actually, the relationship between the two of them really doesn't come into effect until about three quarters of the way through the book. Um, because they're dealing with their own personal things and there's a lot of character growth and I really like that. So that, like I said, it kind of mirrors the, the third book in a way. Because Slade at one point was married to a woman by the name of, I think it's Lane was her name. And she has a daughter named Shay. And so Slade was Shay's stepfather. But of course the two of them divorced. So technically, legally, he is nothing to her now. Now, they didn't get married until the little girl was probably about seven or eight. But she still called him dad. And she harbors this resentment towards him that he never adopted her. Because her new soon-to-be stepfather, that because her mother's getting remarried again, um, is wants to send her off to boarding school and things like that. So, you know, she begs, calls him and begs, can I come and spend the summer with you? So she does, and that's fine. And that's where it mirrors the third book because the main character in the third book, and I can't remember her name off, Tara, I think it was, she had two ex-stepdaughters from a marriage. And those, those stepdaughters end up spending the summer with her as well. So I just find it kind of odd. Um, you know, I know that, you know, this little girl, like she's not a little girl anymore, she's 16 now. She spent, I think they were married for four years. So four years with her as her, as his, as her stepfather, but they haven't talked in four years, but now she's coming to spend the summer with him. I don't know. It just didn't sit that well with me. Uh, it would have made more sense if they'd been in more contact and, you know, they talk to each other all the time. You know, it didn't say that they talked, but it didn't say how often. And, you know, the fact that they haven't seen each other and she's now a 16 year old girl and you know, I'm sure that, I mean, he's the sheriff in town. I'm sure he's an upstanding citizen. But the fact that the mother is just like, yeah, go and live with this random guy. Not random. I mean, he was your stepfather for four years, but go live with him for the summer. You know, and then, I don't know. It just, it kind of bothered me just a little bit. But say la vie, it is what it is. I liked it. At the end of the day, it was a great cowboy romance. If you like cowboy romances, definitely give Linda Leo Miller a try. Um, yeah, these ones are fun and I'm looking forward to finishing off the series. So what am I currently reading? My current audiobook is A Million Little Things by Susan Mallory. This is being narrated on audio by Tanya Eb uh, Eby. And this is the third book in the Girls of Mischief Bay series. I really do enjoy this series. I cannot tell you guys too much about what this one is about because this is a series I really do feel you should read in order. If you want to read them, read them in order because characters that you met in the previous books, they, their stories continue into each do you know what i mean like it'll pick up like a character from the first book will appear in book number two and then a character from book number two will appear in book number three and there's one main character whose story has overarched throughout all three of them so far there is a fourth book called sisters like us that i'd like to get to by the end of the year um but we shall see if i can fit it onto my tbr somewhere but it's really enjoyable um these are great um this is a this is more of a women's fiction novel um, where it's the story about friendship and family and stuff like that. Yes, there is romance in it, but it's not the main plot of the story. But absolutely, I mean, Susan Mallory is an author you cannot go wrong with, and I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this one. Uh, my current ebook is Do or Die Cowboy by June Favor. This is book number one in the Dark Horse Cowboy series. This is one I'm reading. It's a net galley book. Um, it's okay. I'm almost finished it. I'm not 
100% sold on it. I'm not too sure. There's a few issues that I have with it, mainly the timing, that a lot of the bulk of the story seems to be taking place like over a one week time period. So the premise of the story is about a man by the name of Ty, and he runs into this woman um, whose name is Leah. And she has a young daughter named Gracie, and they are obviously running from something. Um, he meets them in a diner, and he knows that they're down on their luck, he can tell. So he offers to buy them their, their food. And, you know, and then they run into each other again when her car breaks down on the side of the road. And, you know, the story kind of goes from there that he ends up driving her back to their grand to her grandmother's place where she's going to be staying because she's on the run from something. And, you know, he agrees to kind of stick around and help out. But, like, she's running from something that's obviously scaring her. But yet, really is getting into this guy's truck and letting him drive her to her grandmother's house. So now he knows where they live. You don't know this guy from Adam. You know, it's just a few inconsistencies. And then, like I said... There's a lot of action in the story. There's this thing that she's running from that's coming after her. I don't want to give away too much of what it is. Um, plus, there's this whole issue. The grandmother's dealing with neighbors, this this family of men who are trying to run her off of her ranch since her husband passed away. So there's that story happening, too. It just seems very, very quick. And there's too much going on for a short period of time. Like, you know, like, for example, she I'm just I don't know what day of the week it was, but let's say she meets him on the Monday. On the Tuesday, he drives her into town and she gets a job. On the Wednesday, she started that job. I'm not joking. Like, that's how quick this is all happening. And it was it's a little off-putting, and I'm not thoroughly enjoying that part of it. Um, but outside of that, the characters I, I like. Leah, I'm not too sure about her. Um, Ty's all right. He's your atypical cowboy. Um, and he's throwing money at everything like it's going to solve all the world's problems. Like, he's buying her stuff for her car, her gas. You know, he fixed her car. He took her grocery shopping and bought, like, an entire house full wor worth of food. He's buying the little girls back to school clothes. Like, it just, like, money doesn't solve everything. Do you know what I mean? And there's a lot of talk about wealth and money in this book as well. But I do enjoy the writing, and I think I will continue on with the series. Um, the other books, the next books, haven't been written yet, because this one just came out on the 28th of August. Um, so I'm going to finish it today and post my review up on, on NetGalley for it. But, yeah, not a favorite. Um... <laughs> I, I don't even know if I'd really want to recommend it. I mean, you know, if you like cowboy romances, and I mean, it's it was a quick read. Like, it's it's been a very quick read. It's it's reading very, very well and stuff like that. It's, it's entertaining. It's just some of the things are really kind of bothering me. So, yeah, and it's more with the pacing than anything else. Um, and my current childhood book, I'm reading a Jesse Ramsey Pet Sitter by Anna M. Martin. I believe this is book number 22 or 23 in the Babysitter's Club series. I just started this one last night. Um, so I'm only about three chapters into it, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, Jessie is one of, her and Mallory are my two, they were always my two least favorite babysitters, only because they were so much younger than the other girls. And, you know, it just, they, I don't know, there was just something, I, I didn't mesh with them as much, I guess. I don't know why. Even though when I started reading the series, I was only like eight. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, um, it's fun. I am currently not reading a print book, um, reason, as I said at the beginning, things have been crazy busy at work and I'm trying to let myself just kind of get through what I need to get through at work without putting too much pressure on myself reading wise. So I probably will not be picking up, um, the one that you guys picked for me for, um, my Harlequin anticipated reads. Um, the one by, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the title of it right now. You guys know which one I'm talking about. I probably won't be picking that up until probably sometime next week. So like, after this week, you know, like not this week coming, but the week after, I will be reading it by the end of September. That's a guarantee. But yeah, like I said, I'm just trying to give myself just a little bit of breathing room just so I don't stress myself out too, too much. So book haul. I do have a print book to show you guys that I had pre-ordered and have completely forgotten that I pre-ordered this. <laughs> and then I got an email from Amazon on Monday that said that, or Tuesday, that my order was on its way. And I'm like, wait, I didn't order anything. But I had pre-ordered because I saw this was coming out. The Babysitter's Club. This is Christie's Big Day. This is book number six, and this is the graphic novel. So I've been collecting these, so I thought I wanted to grab this one, of course, for my collection. Um, yeah, it's listed as book number six. Um, even though they did skip a book, I believe, with the graphic novels. Hold on, let me double check. Because, oh, they didn't skip one. They jumped ahead. So they did Christie's Great Idea, which is book number one. They did The Truth, no. Yeah, the one that they skipped was book number two, which was Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls, which I'm still very, very disappointed in because that would have made an amazing graphic novel. But instead, they jumped ahead and they did Claudia and Mean Janine, which is actually book number seven in the series. 
Then they did The Truth About Stacy, which is book three. Um, Marianne Saves the Day, which is book four. Dawn and the Impossible Three, which is book five. And then this one, which is book number six. They did actually switch um, the artist. And the artist for this is Gail uh, Gallen, Gallen Gan, I think. That's the, the narrator, or not the narrator. The, the illustrator is right there. I'm not a fan of her illustrations. Um, the one who did them first was Rainia Tella, oh, I can't say her. I think you guys might, if you guys read graphic novels, you probably know. She did the graphic novel Smile, I think, and Drama. Um, I really, really liked her. Um, do I have the, uh, one of the other ones handy? I don't, unfortunately. It's down there somewhere. Sorry. But I really liked her artwork better. I mean, this is okay, but it's not fantastic. So yeah. And my only other complaint, like I, I bought these more as a collector, but I'm disappointed because there are a lot of kids that are going to be reading this for the first time. And it's not the series that I had. Do you know what I mean? Like they changed a few things in it. And I know they can do that and that's fine. Um, but for example, in this one, um, in, in this, it actually, she starts in book number five in Dawn and the Impossible Three for the graphic novels. Mallory joins the Baby Search Club. Mallory doesn't join the Baby Search Club until Stacy moves away in book 13. And then Mallory joins in book number 14. So they jumped ahead by bringing Mallory in. And, and I don't like that. I don't think they needed to do that. You know, it, it, I know they're not going to do all of them, you know, as graphic novels, as awesome as that would be. But I know this is a lot of work. And, um, you know, it's just not going to happen. But like, for example, so in this story, sorry, I'm kind of going on off on a little tangent, but I hope you guys are okay with that. So in this story, the whole premise is, is that Christy's mom is getting married to Watson. And all these cousins and friends of the family are coming to this wedding and they're bringing their kids. So there's a whole bunch of kids. So for the entire week leading up to the wedding, because it takes place during the summer, Christy and the babysitter's club offer to look after the kids. So they split the kids into five groups in the book. Um, but in the graphic novel, so they still split them into five book, five groups. But as you see right here, Christy and Mallory, like they had to find a way to throw her into it because she's not supposed to be here. You know, she's in the timeline of the series. She's still only 10 years old, you know, because this takes place during the summer before the eighth grade um, or in her case before the sixth grade. So she'd only be in fifth grade. And I'm sorry um, uh, that I think that was part of my problem with Mal Mallory and Jesse because they were only in sixth grade. And I know that some kids are more mature than others at certain ages. And I know that they weren't supposed to babysit like at night or, you know, later or for too many hours or whatever. My niece is in grade three. So she's eight, right? She'll be nine in February. So you're telling me a girl two years older than her is going to babysit her? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Anyway, so that's my disappointment. Not a huge fan of the artwork, and I did not like the fact that they changed it by adding Mallory in um, at this early point. Um, you know, but it is what it is. And yeah, I'm glad I picked it up and I can add it to my collection. So the other book that I bought this week was a ebook. And I want to thank um, Instagram for this because it's an Instagram buy. Um, Instagram's become so bad for me for looking at books. So the, the other book I bought is called At the Stroke of Midnight by Tara Sevek. S-I-V-E-C is her name. And this is the first book in the Naughty Princesses Club. This series sounds so much fun. So it was the third book that I actually saw on Instagram, which is called Kiss the Girl. So the premise of this series is it's three books and the first one is a Cinderella retelling the second one is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and the third one is a Little Mermaid retelling but they're modern day and these girls live in modern times and it's just kind of excuse me not a retelling per se but they take elements from the stories and um, for this for the first book at the stroke of midnight it's about a woman who is I think she's a single mom and she ends up going to this masquerade ball and meets this guy and, you know, the story kind of goes from there. These are very, very steamy from what I understand. But the first book was on, I don't know if it was on sale, but it was only $2.99 for the Kindle. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. And I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up the next two books as well because I'd really like to have them. I think it'd be a really fun read through. Um, I know the third book, The Kiss the Girl, the main character's name is actually Ariel. It's Ariel Waters. <laughs> and um, the guy's name um, is Eric, which is the name of the prince in A Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, by the way, is my favorite Disney movie. Is She's my favorite Disney princess. My favorite Disney movie is actually Alice in Wonderland, but for all the princess movies, Ariel has always been my favorite. So yeah, so I was really, really thrilled to be able to pick that up. So let me show you guys what I've been knitting this week. 
So I did not get a lot of work done on my sweater because I was working on something else, which I'll show you in a minute. You kind of got a little sneak of it when I was putting that Babysitter's Club book away, but let me show you. So I am working still on the sleeve. There's where I was the last time last Saturday, and that's how much I've gotten done. It's about 10 inches, and I have to go to 14 inches on the sleeve, and then I add in the second color because the sleeves are going to be super long. The sleeves are actually going to go to here. And they're going to have a thumb hole in them. So that's going to be a lot of fun. But the bottom part is going to be a different color than the rest of the sweater, which is going to look awesome. So yeah, so I'm really, really pleased with it. It's knitting up really, really great. I actually had to rip it back because I was knitting away on it and I got to about here. And I realized that my stitch count was way off because you've got to do decreases on the sleeve because your arm is not the same width around from here to here. So you do, you know, decreases as you go down to make it fit. And I've actually tried this on and the arm fits perfectly, so I'm really happy about that. But I realized that my stitch count was off, so I ended up just ripping it back and starting again. So I would have actually been a lot further, but um, but yeah, I wanted to fix it. because And because you're doing two sleeves, I didn't want to fudge it. Sometimes with a pattern, if I'm a little off, I'll just go ahead and fudge it. But because your sleeves should match, I didn't want them to look wonky to each other. So that's why I just figured it's just easier for me to rip it back. So yeah, so I'm still really enjoying this. The pattern is called seclude and it's by alicia Plummer. her patterns are actually all of her independently published patterns including this one are on sale this weekend um i will leave the in information in the description box below so if you're on ravelry you can buy her patterns on ravelry they're all 30 percent off so i ended up actually buying three more sweater patterns she released a new one too called black current that has got it's a turtleneck it looks so pretty so whenever she has a sale i tend to buy more sweater patterns even though i don't knit them very quickly but it's nice to have the pattern for eventually when I do want to go ahead and knit them. And especially if I can get them on sale, like that's the best, right? So, so that is that. And I did, oops, see, sometimes zippers, your, your yarn gets caught. Um, I did finish something this week with my knitting. I finished a pair of socks, you guys. I'm super, super happy. These are the Couch and Cracker socks and they were designed by Julia of the Happy Knitting Podcast. Um, she actually gifted me the pattern when she released it because she's so super sweet So there's where I was last week where my little stitch marker is and that's what I finished um, So yeah, so I was knitting on these at work on my lunch and but I there was a couple days this week I didn't get a lunch break because we've just been so busy. So yeah, so now I have a pair of socks And do you like my sock blockers? Aren't they awesome? Um, my friend had them made for me. Oh, I should show the other side what they they actually say the Canadian knitter Which was the name of my podcast? Um, so yeah, so I'm really really pleased with them the yarn was super awesome. Um, the yarn is by a company called Bling Your String. Erin um, from Bling Your String, she, she dyed this. And yeah, I absolutely love these. They are so comfy. They fit so, so well. And yeah, I cannot wait to add them into the rotation for the fall. So of course, because I finished a pair of socks, I started a new pair of socks. And um, I showed this yarn to you guys last week when I pulled it out of my, my thing of yarns. And this is, this pattern is called Celestial. Now, this is not what I had actually planned on knitting on these socks. Um, I planned on doing Hermione's Everyday Socks, which is a favorite go-to pattern for me for, for pattern socks. It's a really straightforward, easy pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. But my friend Brandy is releasing this pattern for me because she knows how much I love, like, the moon and the stars and things like that. So you can't really see very much. I've just started the toe. So there's the toe of the sock. Um, but it's going to have, like, what look like stars all over the foot and up the front of the leg. And then on the back of the leg is going to be a crescent moon. So I think this will be really pretty. So I am te test knitting these for her, essentially. She plans on releasing them on Halloween. Um, so I'll obviously show you guys when I, um, when I get them done, or as I'm working on them. But yeah, so Brandy does some really, really nice patterns. Um, both, well, I'm sure if you guys, you guys know that um, I have CHD, which is congenital heart disease. Her little girl Letty does as well. And, you know, Brandy and I kind of bonded over that. And um, she released a pattern, a pair of pattern socks a while back. It's called Heart Warrior. And they've got like hearts running up the front. They are gorgeous. I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. If you are a sock knitter and you're interested, go and check them out because they are fantastic. Um, but yeah, so she did those in honor of her daughter, which was super sweet. So there's the yarn I'm using. It is called Baby Doll Dresses and Combat Boots. Um, or Combat Boots and Baby Doll Dresses. I can't remember which way it goes. Combat Boots and Baby Doll Dresses. And this is by Spun Right Round Yarn and Fiber Company. So there's the tag for the yarn. And the bag, I have to show you guys the bag. Isn't it cute? I bought this at Rhinebeck last year. I love the fact that it's just a little see-through. Um, and it was really inexpensive. It was only like $12 for this adorable little bag. 
yes, it's Halloween-y, but fall is coming, and I just feel like the yarn and this, they kind of go together. Um, so yeah, so I'm enjoying working on these, and that's what I plan on doing while I'm editing this video. Um, so anyway, as I said at the beginning, um, there will be a video coming up this week um, talking about a few little minor changes that I'm making to the channel. Um, nothing's going away. I'm just changing the way I do a few things, um, and I'm very, very excited about it. Um, I kind of like mixing things up every now and then to make it more interesting. Um, and I'm also going to be doing my um, October Anticipated Reads is coming up later this week as well on Thursday. So anyway, guys, that is it for me. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below if you read any of these books I've mentioned uh, and what you might have thought about them or what was your favorite book that you read this week because I'd love to know. And until my next video, guys, take care and happy reading. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. <laughs> Bye.